I'm going to show you how we got from this all the way to this. But before we see that, we have to make sure that we understand how to read this. Because this is probably the most important thing in the entire construction process. A lot of people, they get into landscaping and they're like, I can do anything. Bro, you can't do anything without this. Because a job of this size and this magnitude and with all these complexities and the details, you need to have a very detailed plan that shows every single little measurement. Where to dig, how to dig, how much to dig, and how wide. Okay. If you're looking at this right now and you're confused and you're like, oh my God, dude, what am I doing? You need to hook up on a program to learn how to read this whole deal. That program is free and goking, by the way. That's a plug, shameless plug. People are like, T, why are you always plugging? Because if I'm not plugging, you don't improve. I need to plug. I wish someone would have plugged for me when I started. No one was there. It was just me. My dad didn't help me. Now, let's dive into the plan. First, we must see the perimeter of the property. This is the perimeter of the property. Okay, very simple. If you see these little dashed lines, this means there is a five foot setback from the entire property. What does a five foot setback mean? If you look over here, these are utilities, PG&E, telephone lines, internet, all that. So a five foot setback means that if there's ever a situation where the government, PG&E, state of California, whoever, needs to go and access this, they have a five foot setback so they can come on your property and destroy all this area. They can do that legally and they're not gonna pay for anything. So if you have plants here, it gets ruined. By the way, I'm not really sure if they would be responsible to pay. I don't think so. Comment if I'm wrong. Anyway, going forward, this is the front of the house. This is the entire house right here, okay? This is the driveway. These are steppers, deck, pavers, pavers. All these little brick little, little deals are pavers. We see the gates, 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 okay? Very simple. Now, look over here. If you see, this is exactly where we're at. This is gonna be a gym patio. This is a pergola. Look above. We're exactly underneath the pergola. Exactly underneath the pergola. Moving over here, pavers, and then you walk down the stairs. Now, you'd be like, T, why is there stairs here? Well, the designer is really awesome. And this is the designer right here. His name is Matt Daly, Water and Earth. And he pitched the idea to the customer to have a very cool sunken outdoor living space. So you walk out of your sliding door from here, you go on the pavers, and then you go right in to the sunken patio, which is badass. And typically, customers would be like, nah, that's lame. These guys said, that's badass. Let's do it. So they did. So we went four steps down, and now we have a sunken patio area. This is a floating seating bench, okay? Floating steps with lights underneath. Floating. Wood, wood, floating, 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 which is really cool. Fire pit, great offer. We have steppers, steppers, a feature patio, and this. Now, the most important part is where to dig for this, because this is the, pretty much the hardest part of the entire job, this sunken patio. If you mess up the sunken patio, you are toast, my friend. So you need to do the, every single thing correctly, where all the measurements are. Do you know how many times I checked the measurements? I was here in the beginning, marking, measuring, with Jose, making sure all the lines were straight, and when they dug, we did it again. When they were about to form, we did it again. And when the forms were done, we did it again. So I know I checked the measurements four times, maybe five. And I know the boys checked them a lot too. So after we start digging, we took 11 trucks of dirt out. That area required 11 trucks of soil to be removed. That's 220 yards. Oh wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of dirt, geez. That's insane. This is pretty much a freaking swimming pool. It is 24 inches below the level so we had to go down three feet, 36 inches, because base rock, drainage. A lot of you are wondering, T, what happens with the drainage? Where, where's the water go? Well, we dug two big ass pits, six by six by six by eight. We filled it with drain rock and all that water from here should go into these two. And that's the only water source that is covered from this area. No downspouts, all the downspouts go to the front yard. So now that you understand the plan, we first must get a plan of attack. What's the first plan of attack? First thing we gotta do is start digging. Obviously, in this area, you can't be doing everything by hand. You have to get the machine. So we had the Ditch Witch 3000, came in here, started digging. The boys were getting all the dirt out. I said, don't focus on anything else. Demo the entire project first. Get all the concrete, bricks, trees out. I want this to be a dirt landscape, only dirt. After that, start getting the dirt out. Boom, 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 boom. And things have to happen in order. After the dirt is out, then the framers came in. Framers started rolling. Hi, guys. Hello, Cameron. I'm the other cameraman. I got injured at the job site. He did. It doesn't look bad, but it hurts really bad. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Tigran, let's get out of here. So, are you going to file for workman's comp? Uh, sadly, I'm a contractor, so I don't think it really works that way. So, I think I'm just going to sue you. Okay, good idea. Now, when the framers come in, 
This part is very, very important. You can't have people in the way. Everyone has to get out. So all my guys, we left. The framers came in and they were framing here. Two guys by themselves, bunch of wood, and they just kept framing, framing, framing. Jose came over here. He checked on the progress, made sure all the measurements were good. I came over here. I have to come over here, make sure all the measurements are good. Double check everything. You have to make sure everything is perfect because here's the thing. Once the concrete is poured, guess what? You're toast. That's it. You have to make sure everything's perfect. The levels are perfect. The dimensions are perfect. Check with the homeowner. Check with the framers. Check with Jose. Check with me. Check with the designer. Everyone has to be over-informed. The more information you give to other people, the better you will do because other people can catch something. The homeowner asks a really good question. He's like, hey, why is this here? We explained it. We fixed it. Done. Mistake caught. Prevention of mistakes is very, very important in construction because mistakes are going to happen no matter what you do. But if you can prevent it, by communicating with other people, you're gonna be in luck. Come over here. So the very first thing we had to do is they had to come in and form the backside. This thing right here. This is the back of the wall. You have to set this up first in order to make sure you're successful. Okay, come over here. Now that's a little bit quieter here. The backside of this is very important because this sets up everything. They staked everything, made sure the wall doesn't move. These forms are heavy duty. If you look over there, in the middle, you have to do rebar. After you do the back, rebar goes in. After that, then you start doing the face. This took three days of forming, one day of rebar, and another day of staking. So five days of forming and setting up. And the crazy thing is, right now, they're taking all the forms out. If you look behind you, all this beautiful artwork they put in comes out. And all that's gonna be left is a concrete wall. Two weeks later. All right, this is two weeks later. I'm gonna show you all the progress we've done. If you're wondering, what am I sitting on? This is a four by 12 big piece of wood that is gonna be used for the pergola, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, I'm showing you right now. Look at that. This is gonna be a sick pergola. Obviously you've seen the pergola over there. It's gonna be something like that, except on a much larger scale. Very, very clean cut, clean finished. See this? This is a 12 inch thick concrete wall. A lot of you might mistake this for a pool, but it's not a pool. This right here is a sunken seating patio area. Now this right here is thicker than your foundation of your house that you're sitting on. If you look over here, see this foundation? I bet you this foundation is maybe six to eight inches thick. This is a 12 inch thick foundation. And you're probably wondering why on earth is there paper on here? A lot of you contractors are messy. You're disorganized, you're unorganized, and you don't really know what you're doing. So I'm here to tell you professional secrets and advice on why this is important. Imagine you doing this beautiful concrete job and workers going over this area the entire time. It's gonna get scratched. It's gonna look like shit. Put paper down, it protects the concrete, and it prevents a lot of mistakes later on. Now, come over here. A lot of you had questions. T, why aren't they finished in the backside? The backside sits up against dirt, so you'll never see it. And also a lot of you had questions, what is this? This is called waterproofing. This is called mirror drain. So when water comes up against the felt, it filters out all the dirt, and then water drips through this area and it trickles down. Now, do we need this? I don't think so. I don't think water is gonna get through 12 inches of concrete wall, but you know what? I'm not so sure. I don't know if that's a Tigran fact or a real fact. Put in comments if water can go th through 12 inches of concrete wall. I don't know. That's a good question. You might have not seen this before, but those are floating steps. We did that after the concrete, and we're gonna have lights all inside here. Now, if you're wondering, T, how did they do this? Look here, put my hand in there. It looks like the steps are completely floating. When we're ready, we're gonna throw some lights in there, and it's gonna look sick. The entire video is about plants and why they're so important because without this, it'd be very, very difficult to do this job. I'm even going to say impossible. That's right, impossible. It would take so much babysitting from you, the client, the workers. I would have to be here eight hours a day. The homeowner could not go to work because every single question we have, we would need to ask him to make sure that he's on par with what we're doing. But since we have drawings and we're professionals and we know how to read them, that way we're good. This is why it's very important for you to learn how to do this. And if you're watching right now, if you don't know how to read these plants, if you're looking at this and you're like, this is so confusing, I don't know what I'm doing. Go to Goat Gang, get in, it's $3 a day, 97 bucks a month. I show you exactly how to do jobs like this, how to bid them, how to price them. Obviously, if you're starting out, you're not gonna wanna do a job of this caliber and so large, so many different variables because most likely if you do a job this big, you're gonna fail and it's gonna 
eat your ass up in a bad way. You want to start with something small, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000, 20,000. And once you're ready, after a year, you could venture out to $50,000 jobs. Second year, you'll go to your $100,000 job and you'll stay at that level for a long time. I have a whole layout, a whole plan that's just for beginners. So if this interests you, hit the link, get and go king. And trust me, bro, I'm gonna change your life. The amount of money you give me is gonna be nothing compared to what I give you. See you inside.